most children now have older parents, right? Because people aren't having children until they're in their 30s. And there's a big difference between having a parent who's in his or her 30s and having a parent who's in her, his or her point. 20s. Yep. The 20-year-olds are still kind of like kids, and they're going to be more usefully neglectful, I would say. Well, look... One one of the things we used to do with my daughter when she was very little was, you know, when she was about a year and a half, is we'd, we'd have her in a room alone. And she would usually complain about that for a few minutes. And then she'd find a way to amuse herself. You know, she she liked to take books out of shelves and put them back in. And, like, if if you let her be, get through that initial bit of misery, then she would learn how to regulate herself. And, and she got very good at that. Um and then, so that's a good example of minor privation having a positive influence. But, you know, children used to have multiple siblings. And siblings toughen you up because there's tremendous competition in families among siblings. And they had younger parents who had fewer resources. And, you know, now parents are older, first of all. And second, they're more resource rich. And so they're more likely to schedule their children to death in some sense to provide them with all the opportunities that they feel would be useful. And that's understandable. And plus, because they have fewer children, each child is in some sense more precious. You know, not like if you have 10 children, you don't love all of them, but, you know, there's 10 of them. There's, there's only so much excess attention that can go around. And they do a, a lot of socializing each other rather than being socialized by parents. But if you only have one child, you know, you're going to devote all your resources to providing them with absolutely everything you can provide them with. And one of the dangers of that is that you'll overprotect them and you'll provide them with too much. And we don't understand those dynamics, right? We, we don't understand how much you should stay hands off your kids and let them go out there and make their own mistakes and, and find their own way. And and that's, that's, well, that's tricky and, and we're ignorant about it. And so I think one of the consequences of that is that we do have a reasonable percentage of young people, maybe young adolescents, the kind that you hear about at university, who have been overprotected and overscheduled and under-challenged in some sense. And so they're not very resilient. And that's... And then, of course, what's happening in the universities, the safe spaces and the trigger warnings mm, and all of that. Yeah. And there's good recent research on this. Trigger warnings clearly make things worse rather than, than better. We extend that overprotection far longer than is helpful. Um, you know, it's hard, though, because, as I said, when you have resources, you can use them to make your children's lives, let's say, easier. But the question is, like, do you really want to make the life of someone you love easier? And that's an incredibly difficult question.